Well, good morning. Um, the, uh, shall we say, brief I've been given was to have a presentation uh, and then move to workshop mode. Um, but what I try to do really today is give you a range of case studies. We're going to hear vo uh, people talking. We hear students talking. Uh, you'll get a real feel for where I've come from for using digital technologies. Um, I suppose I've progressed since using websites for assessment in the year 2000. From 2006, I got involved in a project to use audio feedback to students. From 2007, we rolled out digital storytelling to all our first year students. So we've got quite a track record of, of, of looking at this. We've therefore moved on to mobile technologies now because everybody seems to have a mobile in the pocket, and I can't find my mobile, it's probably in that pocket. But I imagine people in the room have got things like, a, who's got a one function device? Now, that tells you how old you are. Te no offence, me included. You tend to be over 25 likes a watch. Under 25, there's a rough rule, doesn't like a watch because it's a one function device. Everybody has a camera, yeah? Nowadays, the old school have now defunct flip cameras. Still good. But people say, don't need cameras now, it's all on my phone. I love these, dictaphones. Yeah, cheapest chips. I like cheapest chips. Pull the bottom off, plugs in your computer, it's great. Costs about, oh, I don't know that now, £30. They're useful, I've used them really successfully. Who's got one of these? Mine's set up for field work. Mine's got the, it's droppable, it's waterproof, it goes in the field. Finally, this is the only technology I'm actually looking at today is that, is one of these you might like. This is an air stash. This, or oh, air stash. Yeah. This is, it runs off an app, off an iPad, and I can have a local uh, hotspot and I can put stuff on here for students, they can all look at it, about up to five devices, run video off it on the train, because you know the limited space on there, all my videos are on there, I can, watch, I can watch videos on it. I can have files on it, they're great. It's a local hotspot. And you put, you, you put a little uh, SD card in the bottom, 32 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes. So if your iPad's only got eight, end of problem. Air stash. That's my little gift, that one at the beginning. It's a, it's a local hotspot for you and your iPad or smartphone. Because everybody goes, oh, I've got no space, I've got too much on it. That gets around it. And you can share that with your students. Anyway, that's just the, that's my technology done with. Brian will leave at the back. But uh, association, lots of colleagues I've worked with, lots of resources I've got on here. I've done in partnership and collaboration with colleagues from the UK, from biosciences, from geography. Uh, Ian Fuller, I've been out to New Zealand and done things with him. Hopefully today we'll see some examples of video and so we'll hear some New Zealand students talking to camera. Um, that gives you a rough idea of what we're going to do today. We're going to look at what reflection is. Don't panic, it's one slide. Well then we're looking at a range of case studies where we've used it. From digital storytelling, staff videos, how they've been used, student documentaries, audio and vi uh, video feedback. Talking heads, the idea inside that is a range of um, examples of where people just use talking heads uh, for that. We'll then stop the talk and then we move into world cafe mode. Anyone done a world cafe? Often people go into liquid cafe, but don't worry about it. We then we do a, we'll do a world cafe where you're going to actually come around and do stuff, get some products at the end. We might photograph the products you can produce. You're going to finish off with the pitch. And then I'm going to leave you with an action plan, you're going to leave an action plan, and you're going to fill in some card about where you're going to be in six months. And I'm going to email the cards back to you as a reminder. It'll all make sense. Oh, that's by lunchtime. Right. One of the ideas today is to think about reflection. I, I assume, and we might catch me out, everybody knows something about reflection. Um, a lot of my practice has often been around that learning cycle about concrete experience, reflection, observation, uh, abstract conception, changing what I'm doing and then re-experimenting again. So that learning cycle. 
But reflection itself, nice, two nice quotes really. The process of reflection involves reviewing an experience to describe, analyse, evaluate and therefore inform your future practice. That's ultimately a nice, powerful statement about what reflection is. Moon argues that the outcome of reflection should achieve learning, action or clarification. So it's almost a given that when you do reflection, you should be doing this. There should be some action involved, some kind of clarification. And in many ways today's activity will get you to reflect on some of the slides I've presented and reflect on your own practice where you might bring ac activities in. But that, in, in essence, is what reflection is about. And it's not difficult. Yeah? We do it all the time. I'm always reflecting about my status of my bank account when my children are around. <laughs> One of mine's going to university in October, so I reflect even harder. So, now, why have I put podcasting in? People get hung up on terms. All that basically means for me is just a, uh, come in, come in. It's just a platform for distributing audio and video over the internet. Don't get hung up on it. It's just a distribution method for audio and video. If you're going to reflect using those methods, you might find nowadays a lot of the content is delivered by a podcast. The information is pushed here. You can have Radio 4 podcasts. They're great. Show me age now. Music can deliver that way. No one goes to record shops and buys vinyl anymore. Not really. It's all downloads. So podcast is all about the distribution. That's it. On a mobile device, it's enabling you to access the content. This is what students like. They like to be able to access the content wherever, wherever they want. But that concept puts people off if you get all a bit twitchy about it. But don't. Things to think about. Some work I was involved in about 2007 at the University of Leicester. There's different models for podcasting. Remember podcasting is just delivery. So you can cross podcasting out. It's just a method of delivery. That's it now. And what I've done is been involved with is students creating video podcasts. Students creating digital storytelling top right and I've been providing audio feedback like colleagues in the room to students. And this is just a delivery mechanism. A lot of these, a lot of these other titles I haven't engaged much with because for my discipline there's no value with it. I've done iWalks which is going to be location based information. But from your discipline you may want to tackle lecture summaries, you may want to, uh, div you know, uh, the skills development. So there's a range of different Opportunities for, remember, it's just delivery. Modes of delivery, by all means ask. Um, so, really, on what you're just saying, you're providing feedback yes. as a podcast as a student. Yeah, I'll come on to it in a moment. We'll answer those questions. Uh, I'll, give some, give, I'll give some suggestions, uh, experience, but yes. Where it's appropriate, that's the key. Yeah, but I guess I'll, I'll explain that to you. And it even works with large groups as well. So... I'm into, quick, I'm into quick, easy wins. And often, they, uh, you know, when you're putting things out on a machine, you get a, lot of, a lot of my, shall we say, students, a lot of my, uh, my children, love to create a podcast. That's the, inf that's the actual in interface they're using to create it. But that's for another workshop, another time. Remember podcasting? Just the method of delivery. So an example for you. Case study one, and there's a quite a few case studies, because you want to be able to go where these ideas and think about it. Student, student digital story, storytelling. It's hung on a first year field report. Now this is it about what, when we're trying to bring in some kind of reflection. Often reflection for me is often used with um, enhancing engagement. And we felt a lot of our students on the field course, this is... About 70 students do this on the field trip. All our year does it. We end up with about 32 managing student groups to do this. And we have a standard field report, which we'll come on to a bit later, and they pick one of the two, shall we say, chapters, whether it's method, whether it's results, and they put together a digital story. Dead simple. 
And we've used that as a means for improving engagement. So students' perspectives on what they felt of this has been analysed through pre and post experience, questionnaires, surveys and focus groups for over a four-year period. And the typical field report is there, but what we're trying to do is develop some kind of new knowledge and new skills as a value added. And it provides a new medium for communication and a new medium for presentation. This skill set is already there, we're just tapping into it. And basically, students love to reflect if they're given the medium to do it through. So, if we were to look at this and put a model on this, I've got human geography colleagues that love to put models on things and try and explain things. Introduction, experimentation, maturity. And this is relates to actually that idea of reflection. So the experiment and reflect and the products you get afterwards are much more mature. And hopefully, in a moment, the embedded video might demonstrate this. But I've got crossed fingers. So what we have is, we have students. Confident, familiar, experienced. Some are anxious, reluctant and inexperienced. We have film and editing, learning by doing. Remember, it's all active learning. It's constructively aligned. Have you come across that concept? Yeah? It, I call that fit for purpose. That's my way of looking at it. Constructively aligned. Yeah. Or as I call it, fit for purpose. So we try and fit this idea of bringing this reflection mode in through a digital uh, avenue is this film and editing. It can be unplanned, it can be random. Very active, over-creative, sometimes on the, on the initial run-through when they do this. It can be humorous. I've got an example for you in a moment. Because do you teach them this? Or do they just teach you to do the research? No, we provide guidance on it. But when I say guidance, uh, it used to be handouts. I, now I did a little publication, how to, how to produce a digital story. And my handouts are now a and act at a publication that students can take away and read. But the skill set is there. It's group work. So in group work, there's always someone in the group that seems to have a wealth of these skills and can use peer learning to bring other students along with them. But we have support sessions for it. Uh, yeah, so you can see that some of the cameras shy, levels of activity can be a bit lower. Now, this is where I'm going to see if it works. From mouse, oh yeah, here we go. Right, here we go. Is it gonna? Uh, it did work last night. No, it hasn't worked because we've changed the platform. Damn that blast! Oh, there we are. We're up. So you get the feeling, what we've got there is, this is their first day in the field, they're working together. Historically for this, people forget the methods of views, and we said, right, create us a, a video, synthesise that information, and give it back to us. Okay, we can do that, because what the driver behind this was about 2005, 2006, a lot of my students will go on field work, use lots of range of different methods, how's today gone? It's gone great. What methods did you use? Oh, that was this morning. What we found with this, when we brought the video in, in 
They've had to synthesise that information, know what, they've do, know what they're doing to present it to camera. And that's their, that's their trial, believe it or not. That's their fun bit. You know, and they're getting, getting to terms with it. So it really got them engaged. The lads who were involved with that were not academically strong, but some of them were fabulous on camera. Real, really good. Yeah. Now, hopefully this is still going to play ball. Um, so what we end up with, as I jump around all over, is we end up with this experimentation mode on the field course when they're doing um, their, their practice days in the areas that we give them. And I should have said on that field course, it's a, it's a weeks long residential, it's skills driven, uh, we have lots of lead days, on two of the days they have to create their own information, we call it information podcast, because the students can relate to that. But as we know now, it's just a delivery system, it's great that, isn't it? Um, but when at the end of the week, they do, a they do individual research projects. And part of that research project, remember, is to produce a, a research report. We said the research report you have to produce has a method section or a results section that's digital. It's on the server. They submit that prior to the final report. And what we find is that the final videos they produce, and this is like two days later, is much more mature. They've gone through the introduction bit, they've gone through the experimentation bit, and you end up with much more academic, innovative, much more structured and creative products because they've gone through that, remember that reflection model? They've gone through that reflective practice. And this is only a first year field trip in geography. It often rains. Yeah. Yes, what we have really is, um, because we've got this in first year, colleagues can think, oh, we can bring in a documentary style podcast. It's good, isn't it? Delivery system, that's all it is, uh, for audio and video in, in year three. So once you get it in the first year, it's embedded the skill set. You can, re can bring it back in and ask for a higher level of engagement further on. We ran this uh, for Devon, for Liverpool students, that's our location for them, and the Centre for Alternative Technology looking at sustainability. Total number of students was about 110 students. We had 32 groups running. And we have support sessions for the groups. They're interested in support sessions. We bring a newspaper, we hand out support material, the groups work together, and the groups go. But we have to run support sessions because we cannot assume everybody's got the skill set. We've also, it's a great thing, that's when the groups begin to break down. Friendships begin challenged by technology. So we get fractured into groups, but we support the small groups that work together. So the actual support you're thinking of here isn't really support for the technology, it's support for the process. It's the teamwork in the background. Have you got the materials, how are you going to put it together? They seem to handle that. They start off really not confident and anxious, and by the end, when they hand it in a few weeks later, expert. Some of the girls, I should have got, I should have, you, know, you always think I should have written that quote down. Uh, week four, when they came back from the field course, she said to us, and I quote, oh, this is stupid, why are we doing this? Four weeks later, saw them over a machine, he was in Windows Movie Maker to bring it all together. Well, it's a bit long, isn't it? It's seven minutes 13, it's, it's a bit quiet. They've gone from actually having no confidence to being over, uh, shall we say, over critical of their product. So, hopefully. So, if you just saw that, just that window, is that the software for yeah. Yes, okay, I've got, I'm assuming certain things. Yeah, free with a Windows um, operating system is Windows, Windows uh, Movie Maker Live. Yeah, if you ask your students, a lot of them will use that for creating YouTube videos because that's what you do. I don't do it. Most of the room won't do it, yes. Ah, good question. I'll wait for that one. That, yes, they are. And I've got some criteria you can use to mark them. Okay. Interesting thing is here, there's bigger issues we're going to get into. It's only case study one. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this is, uh, where do you put the videos? Does everybody see these videos? Do we put them on the, on the server? Uh, do all your students share the videos? We've never done that. We're always a bit twitchy about social media. 
we try and give the students an idea about, oh, well, it's done for university type work with university cameras, uh, it's copyright, and they sort of believe us, which is quite nice, even though technically we're a bit fuzzy on that area. But we're more interested in controlling where that product goes. It's on our server, part of their report, they, we, we load it into our server, we give them a hyperlink, the hyperlink goes in their written report. So the member of staff looks at the hyperlink, they can have, that group can have a copy of their own work, they should, they've got it anyway, but we don't share it publicly. It's something we're still, we're, we're still fighting against. I suppose we haven't got the confidence to say, yeah, they won't put it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, what, what these products to produce, often if, we feel, if you link up with partner organisations, the assessment that they're producing, the partner organisation, oh, can we have that? So you can get direct output that, that organisations want, usually charities. They often get work experience. They, you often get jobs that get spin-off just from doing this type of work in first year. It is free. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, to win a prize. Yeah, yeah. That's what's called an institutional barrier. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that we might consider in the workshop yeah. later on. But there's other software now that's freely available that you get free software for, for smartphones and for iPad devices mm -hmm. that you just pay £1.50 to get rid of the adverts. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you some of the products and that later on. Mm -hmm. But these are some of the issues and challenges you've got working with this. Yes. Yes. We do, some colleagues don't, but we do. We still want that written support. The, 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 the video is done as a group exercise, gets peer evaluated about group contribution, but they have a written independent bit as well. That report is... Yeah. No, what we're trying to do is, it, the, 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 the loads of reflection they're doing in this is really a, as a disguise for increasing engagement. So if in your discipline, this can be a real uh, nice, comfortable stick for engagement. Um, okay, that took longer than I thought it would do, by the way. Right, I'm trying to get a video to just to run. No, I'm not quite sure if it's gonna play a ball. It was to show you, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, leave it, I'll leave it alone. It was to show you a different level of finished video much more higher finish, much more polished, sensible. It's a shame I can't do it, but I'll move on. If I get to work later, I'll try and show you. It's a finished product. It's embedded in the PowerPoint. Can I just say, if this is an issue that we have, we can call that. Yes. Uh, Putting media into finished. Okay. Do you do it very well? okay. Okay. I, I normally do it in bed. A colleague of mine, who I've got this from, I was, I was on the credits, embedded it. I never embed. You'll see that in a moment. I've got other ones that are off. But that's just the embedded part. But that's just, these are just challenges we've got. It's not, the problem machines, all right, it's probably not quite working with the level or um, release date of PowerPoint. There's some kind of quirk with that. Um, but the key question here is, you've done the video, you've been on the field trip, you've got them engaged, they've handed it in. We said, how are we going to mark this? We came up with some assessment criteria. Project, normal stuff. On the right, digital components, not worth... All of it's 30%. Quality of content, content complements the enhancers report. Quality of presentation, sound quality, creativity. And basically students basically appreciate the opportunity to produce a practical digital story before doing the assessed version. So they actually remember that fun bit. They valued that because they learnt and it wasn't being uh, penalised for it, for the real type of thing. And that is basically a digital story. You can put that in any context, any discipline. Yeah. Okay, good one. Nowadays, we have no assumptions. We spent uh, £10 on a tripod, because a tripod gives you that wonderful professional pan. It's great, pan, £10. Put a bag underneath. We have standard cheap cameras, £50 cameras. 
Not like any flip cameras, the normal you're taking photographs, move to video function, cameras. So we have, a, we have a bank of those. We started off with six. We've now got 14 of those. And we buy Tesco's value cases for £1.50 to put them in. And a spare, you know, spare battery and things like that. So we have that kit that costs really nothing that we've built over years. It's saying, use this kit, it's on field work. If it gets wet, you don't have to do it. Nowadays, students are doing something called bring your own device. They're already coming with their devices. That creates issues. Issues being, how do you support students bringing their own device, bringing their own technology? We have spent five pounds on zip bags and a bag of rice. And it saves students fabulous. Zip bag, put the phone in. Four grains of rice inside, zip it up. That will now protect that on field work. The rice gets moisture down inside, can't get the rain in, and they can use it. Believe it or not, a five pound fix. Colleagues at other universities thought that was, I'd won the lottery. We never thought of that. Because students are taking their devices on field work. So we're trying to get them to sort of like, okay, bring a device. But they've got no cases. They've just got the iPhone 5 and no case. It's pouring down. We hand out iPads like this. We have a, a collection of these. We don't have many. We have six. Currently in Iceland with colleagues from Reading. Tell you, can we borrow those? Yeah, of course you can. Off they went. So, so it's basically trying to make sure we've got, we've got inclusivity. Yeah? There's ethical issues, things like that, but we try and do it. Sorry, sorry, yes, go on. Oh, yeah. But they were aware that they weren't being graded. Or Correct. Oh, it's time to play, as I call it. Yeah. And some of those are the funniest outtakes you've ever seen. And they actually put the outtakes in the real thing at the end. And here's the outtakes. And they put them at the end. Because it's creativity. And then they go and show the parents, look at this, what I've done. Oh, you've done that in a geography course. What's that about? And it's a product that they can actually show around. So, what do the students think of this? Well, there you go. 63 words. What best words describe your experience? Interesting, different, fun, enjoyable, exciting, team building, frustrating. There's a bit of negative, modern, rewarding, motivating. So there's lots of positives coming through. Case study two, right, change everything. They are the students with the producers. We talked about before. Excellent comment at the beginning. Who are we, are we talking about production and consumption? Here we're talking about consumption. This might go down well if you're doing distance learning. A colleague of mine, uh, Jenny Hill from the University of West of England, uh, has created some video podcasts to hot deserts and tropics. The students are never going to go in there and field work. She got some HEA money to nip out there and do some filming. She looked like Richard Attenborough going down the, going down the river and it's fabulous, done with a video mic and it's super. I was trying to, get, trying to get you a video cut to see that, but she doesn't respond to emails very well. But... The key thing is, that is basically some video the student's going to watch as part of supporting their biogeography course, second year, University of West of England. What they found was this con combination of autonomous and social constructive learning support of reflective activity. It'll make sense in a minute because she's got a model over the page, which is very good, that can nurture a range of learning styles. There is a need for video podcasting, remember, method of delivery. Uh, to be integrated effectively into the learning environment. In other words, if you just give them a video to watch, are they doing any real learning? Or is it just going, nice video? That's what it boils down to. Is it just a nice video? So what she did, there's your lectures. She creates some video podcasts. It could be yours. It could be some you found on YouTube you want them to look at. Uh, they did self-assessment knowledge checks. Okay, they've got a little bit down the way in line of, uh, what's that great educationalist, uh, those, can't think of, 1956, <sighs> classic, oh, I can't see my notes out on there, basically the idea that their learning increases the more active it gets, here it's very passive, there's knowledge checks, but what she found was that when they're on their own, they are, that's surface learning, when they've got the deep learning is when they move their surface checks into, right, in the session, come in, we're going to discuss and reflect on where those videos fit in. What have you learned from those videos? What questions does it raise in the seminar? So they had dialogic feedback, face-to-face -face feedback, student to student, staff to student, talking about these videos. And what she did was she looked at the granging marks. Um, uh, she actually interviewed the students and she found that when they did that, when, first of all, she did just this bit to revision to assessment. There was no real... In increase but when she put this in the constructive learning bit 
she found the students more valued and could be, it's, it's a no-brainer. They basically reflect on the value of the videos they just watch. Put it into assessment. Uh, if it's just facts and knowledge, it's shallow. If it's comprehension and synthesis and evaluation, it's deep. It's obvious stuff. You probably say, yeah, I'll do that anyway. It's great. But I love the model because basically you can replace this with YouTube video into my practice. The fact she got a little money to go abroad, somewhere nice and warm, and travel and create videos. But she had to cut them all together using Final Cut Pro. Is that right? Yeah, Final Cut Pro. And they look really professional. They're absolutely super. Um, but what the, the winner is that bit. They're actually bringing it back in. So you can have people distance learning, looking at these things, but it's trying to get people to reflect, put it in context, ask those questions. I thought that was a really quite good example to show you. Um, and it's a good practice model. You'll have access to these slides after, by the way. So, oh, Case study two. How many time doing? Yeah. I'm late already. <coughs> right. Case study three. We've now gone from first year, second year. We're now third year. We've now gone to the University of Loughborough. We've gone to uh, Heike Jones and her colleague, Elizabeth, uh, who are students on a... Uh, creation rural space, what country, what, where's that? Crete, yeah. Doing 10 minute digital, digital documentaries to collect, also they collect supplementary audio, now here's a question I've thought of, are there any ethical considerations? We mentioned ethics on our first year one with students. There are ethical considerations. Can you think about any ethical considerations? This is the key thing, if you're getting students as producers, yeah, need consent forms. Anything else? So you can see if you can get them all. Uh, you can't film children. Uh, you've got to be aware of culture. Uh, can't go trespassing. That's what it said on, the, on, the, on their paper. I read it to film. Uh, part of the con con some of the context of what they were doing here was they could pick themes like culture, uh, agriculture, tourism. So they couldn't go filming on the beach. Can you imagine filming on the beach in Crete? The Brits abroad. It might not be inappropriate. So basically, there's lots of ethical issues to concern when you get students as producers. And you can't assume anything, you've got to tell them what the ethics are. We have ethics in our paper. Ethics are in that paper. It's a table, it's great. You can just go after. Or you can, what I think the best thing you can do is probably modify. Mod modify for your own setting and your own e examples. But the video documentary is forming an important aspect of the module and succeeded in developing, oh, it's spelt wrong. Students, ways of seeing, representing, and imagining different aspects of rural Crete. These are human geographers. They're all about space and place and get really excited about it. Depending on your discipline, you might get excited about that as well. For me, let's dig it up and get dirty. But that's just me being a physical geographer. But that's a really super paper on looking at working with people, ethical issues. Uh, how does she assess it? Funny enough, quite similar to what we do. Overall assessment criteria, structure the video, compile editing, relevant information, communicate effectively, deliver a balanced, original, <coughs> completed presentation, design is in there, creative way, independent study for effective audio material, but the winner on this is, the criteria assesses the student's ability to create an original video based on images, interviews, and students. They actually sampled audio within it. So they've got overlaid a still image with audio, our students, not in first year, but I couldn't get the video to run. You could see that interviews with someone and they actually have the audio showing the picture of the place they were without actually showing the, the face of the person. So it brought it alive. That flow of commentary, an argument that is critically reflected in the chosen topics. They were able to reflect critically using the video and the context, I presume. And that works really well. Oh, right. Now, some people in the room do this, so we can share knowledge, which is great. And this is my winner for large group, quick, easy wins. Uh, audio feedback. I like audio feedback. Probably, and it's not because I like the sound of my own voice, right? For me, I find it quite useful in a range of contexts. 2006, I did an entire module through audio feedback. I thought, oh, I'll try an entire module. I got some research money to try that out. I learned a valuable lesson. Hmm. Don't do it. Key question was, be, be appropriate. Uh, I do my audio feedback on fieldwork, large groups related to presentations. 
Uh, potential for more in-depth and detail, it's quicker than writing. It's more personalised, more understandable, uh, greater sensitivity to the spoken word. You've got to be careful with how you um, put it together. You can't go, <sighs> lot. If, it's, if, it, if you hear your um, disappointment in your voice, it'll come out in the audio. I've, I've found that. Responsiveness to receiving information verbally. Here I'm the producer. What you tend to find is students can trigger students to create a, a podcast back to you. So they can be producers of this. They can reflect on, the, on their own learning. You can bill this in as being a reflective assessment exercise before the end working. Give me a podcast on what you think the good parts of your work is as a self-assessment exercise. Oh, here's some criteria. Record it in audio and deliver it to me. Yes. Yeah, Dragon. Yeah, I'm, I'm experiment. A colleague uses that. Uh, there's all sorts you can do. There's screencasting software if you want folks to talk to screens and do all that. But for me, it's all about nice and simple. It's on the phone, it's on the, on the, audio, on the dictaphone. The idea they can sit down and talk to you. It's an MP3 file, so it's really small. It's just audio and it's deliverable by email. Yeah, but the thing with the text-to-speech, you can write through the text. Yep. Yeah. You can, but it might, they, they might be able to, it depends, again, that could be a project for you, whether they think that's actually as personalised as, hi, Derek here, rather than the computer voice. Um, but with distance learners, there's a great winner on this because they, the distance you have disappears. It's gone because you're speaking to me, your voice. Uh, what we have found that's very interesting is, no one's mentioned it yet, are we doing all these exercises for summative, for assessment or just formative. Formative feedback we've worked is generally more appreciated than summative due to its potential immediacy to improve the grade. Audio feedback that's done as formative I find very successful because you can be quite names, you can go be hi Brian, I see you know, if it's a group you can, you can be relaxed, you can have a cup of tea, you can turn your newspaper, it doesn't have to be perfect, it can, it can be lived in and it works really well. Student quotes, I've only got two for you. Hearing your voice seems to make the course seem closer, less distant. That's taken from a distance learner. You might be doing that here, but it, it works really well, it joins people up. Here's one for you. I listened to this at home and felt like you were in the room with me, and I wasn't totally comfortable with that. <laughs> so you've got, again, perceptions come in as well. But if you target it, I'm not saying individual feedback for... Uh, large group teaching, but I've got a winner for large group teaching with this. And it's that. Large group feedback. That's 90 coming back. If I'm going to feedback to a large group, 100 plus, on generic, what people get wrong every year, and you think, no one's listened to me, why don't you, when you give it out front of the class next year, put one of those down and record yourself giving the feedback on the assignment. Put that audio file on your Moodle space or Blackboard space for next year's students. Before you do your assignment, read the large group generic feedback from last year. It's the same assessment. What can you get from that? And they'll go and listen to it and see whether you can get a shift in the grade because they're going to listen to that, that, that podcast. And that can be one, one generic group feedback for 150 students, 200 students. You might do two or three of those in a year, but you can tell everybody... I do podcasts at feedback to 300 students. You've only done three three-minute podcasts, but you're still doing it. And the key thing is, it has a feed-forward opportunity, and it's, it's looked on by students very easily. It's a quick, easy win. It, it, uses, it can be used year on year. You can alter the stats. You can say, oh, number of firsts, number of fails, what, what was the main criteria? And you do it once in the class, record yourself doing it, upload it, next year's students can make value of it. And for me, that's worth doing. Large group teaching, it's there, quick, easy win. And you can go around, sit in the cafeteria, oh, I do a podcast at feedback. I'm so down with the kids. But they, they might actually value it, and it's quick and easy. Well, the other thing is, they can listen to it again. Yes, and again. Yeah. The, the thing is, they can try and listen to it before they do the work, because look at last year's students. They get two bites at the cherry. Have you found that it actually cuts down the time for explanation? Yes. It's, it's really quite a good, effective use of my time. Yes, go on. You've used this as well. Yeah, a few of us tried this in the school of education back after becoming yeah. X number of years ago, actually. Um, and that kind of interested me to feed forward and try and turn feedback from some of work into formative feedback. So even though learners might not do that same assignment ever again in the future, from the extrapolation, Yeah. 
bien entendu. Um, That's the next slide. Yeah, it's really good, yeah. And um, it cut down on marketing time, it increased weakness to students' engagement and possibly their satisfaction. Um, they also started using it because they were training teachers with their own students, say in 16 to 19, and it was incredibly effective. And once we got our heads around it, quicker, but only once we got our heads around it. Yeah, yeah. The learning curve. How, what size groups were they, by the way? Right. Okay. So, I mean, relative yeah. to other people, not that big. In some yeah. Cases, but. Okay with that. Uh, but the key thing about this, you've still got to have the first same principles, but any feedback. It's got to be good feedback. Just because you're having digital audio feedback, I mean, reflective feedback, it's still got to meet characteristics of, it's got to be reflective, it's got to reflect self assessment, encourage dialogue. Uh, clarifies good performance, uh, closes the gap, uh, higher quality of information, motivational, uh, helps shape teaching, and most importantly, it's not on that list, timely. If you go down that line, you can't say, sorry I didn't get the feedback to you, I know it's nine weeks late, but it's a lot of work, this audio feedback. So part of the planning is to make sure the resource is in place to support you to do it. So it's got a f that's, just normal that's just normal characteristics of good feedback, that you just move to a different medium. A colleague of mine, University of Reading, um, I thought, what can I put on for you? Should I get talking head off him? I thought, he'll never give me one, he's too busy. They've got an engaging feedback website. I thought, I'll take a screenshot of that and put it on. There you go. Basically what they're doing, and this is great for distance learning students, they have flip cameras and they video themselves. Again, like you said before, you can video yourself giving generic feedback and put the video online for students to look at. Again, they feel more connected. And all you're doing is talking to video. I hate looking at myself on video. A lot of my students think it's great. Any issues with that, do you think? I can think of two. Is it available for any Correct. That's... Exactly, that's one thing. Uh, you've got file size problems, download problems. You've got Vimeo as a possible mechanism for it. Yeah. 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 I mean, the key thing is what they're trying to do is they're, they're saying that the video feedback that they've done on their project, was responded to a GIST project, they found the students love the video. They could engage with the video. The barrier is the staff. Sorry people. Um, but I think the barrier is the staff because they say, oh, I've got the skills for this. Or it's a level of resource to make it happen and support for you to make it happen. How is it going Blackboard? How is it going Moodle? You know, how is it going to be? Is, does it need its own, is it a Vimeo channel or something so you can watch it rather than people downloading the video itself, dropping it into YouTube. Whereas if it's in, on a browser, we can, they, they can listen to it and play it, but they can't actually pull it off quickly. And that got rid of some of the staff's fears uh, at University of Reading. But it's a huge resource there you can look at. I wasn't going to re reinvent the wheel. It's probably a thing. If I give you that screenshot, you can go and have a look. How do you prepare for them? Do you kind of prepare a text run through okay. before you do a final? Right, this is very good, this. You know, it's like the movies. There's a few outtakes. Yeah. Uh, when, we've done our video, when we've done our audio feedback, we said, right, why should students listen to this? All they want is the mark. So... The key question is, is it summative, is it formative? If it's formative, there's no mark to go in it. If it's summative, it's got to have a, usually a student number or student numbers at the beginning, because it's anonymous. You've then got your blurb that goes with it, the criteria, and then at the back end, we put the mark, it's embedded, so I've got to listen to this to find the mark. And at the end, we have a disclaimer, like you get on the bottom of uh, feedback sheets, uh, so it fits the protocol of university. Because as a disclaimer, this marks are provisional to meet the awards board. If you've got any problems, email me and all that bit. And that's by a wraparound that you've got on the feedback. Just like a quality assurance wraparound. Uh, our institution has got the great phrase, you can give audio feedback because it just says normally. And if you're doing good quality audio feedback, they don't mind. External examiners, you haven't mentioned that. How can they get it? You make it available to them so they can listen to the feedback. They may have to listen to it before they come online. No, fine. let's be truthful. Yeah. 
we've given we've off we historically used to our, used to our um, externals uh, iPads um, iPods downloaded when they came. Uh, it was it was it was they, they weren't they weren't interested in listening before and give an opportunity to listen to it when they arrived. So there are ways around it. I was watching my time, half past. Um, Go on. Yes. As a channel. You could be, but you may have to go uh, make sure if you're going to do it, the institution might want to know that you're doing it. Correct. Yeah, you can, that, that's fine. I mean, for me, if that works and people can get on it, students know where it is, they log in, using, but the issue there is governance comes back to haunt you. Depending on what management grade you're on, people go, oh yeah, there's that one again. Uh, governance, the idea of who owns the copyright of that material. But yes, go on. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay with that. I've got two more things to do. I know I'm running a bit behind, but we're, we're all right. Yeah, okay. I know I'm a bit hot now. <laughs> Talking head examples. I've got, I'm, I'll show you some video clips. I've got them set up to go at the end, but... What do we mean by talking head examples? It's something you can do that are quick and easy. Um, we, on our project website, we've got, uh, we have you know, conferences. We have people going around going, some standard questions, and we video them. Create a talking head, put it on the website. So you can get instant reflection on videos uh, as talking heads, often from conferences and delegates. We use that very successfully. I've been nobbled with it. And thought, Derek, what's your thoughts on the video? And, 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 oh, they ask you first, you okay the video, it's going to go on the local website. Yeah, you're fine. And then a quick one minute clip. So we end up with about 25 talking heads, instant feedback about a conference. Staff reflections on their teaching practice. I've got an example on here. A colleague of mine doing a PG cert, rather than submitting a full report, submitted a, a, a podcast, talking to camera. We might play the opening bit for you. But she's doing her reflective bit to camera. We have a tutorial sessions at, uh, in my institution, and one of the uh, tutorial sessions is about research. A lot of our students don't know that staff do research. They have this perception that staff are either gardening in their offices, reading the Telegraph, no, are waiting for students to come knock at their door because we're just there to give lectures. There's no perceptions. So one thing we brought into our tutorial session second year is staff research journeys. Now, we put the staff research journeys as audio files. They could be video, by the way. We have them as audio files uh, where we got a member of staff, I think the research assistant many years ago, to interview with five standard questions to colleagues. Recorded it. They all go online. The students can listen to the research journeys of staff and go, oh, I didn't know that about Derek. Oh, is that a research? And they got all the staff, and then they come in for a tutorial session They've read the pieces beforehand, and they all, they all talk about research journeys. So in many ways, it's like, what's the trendy word now? Flipped classroom? You come across that concept? You've got it all on video beforehand. They come together. You have a seminar. That's it. All the content's delivered prior to the main lecture. Lots of uh, preloaded planning for that. Flipped classroom, yeah. So, but for me, that's an easy thing to do. Staff research journeys, you can put any badge you want on it and you just record the audio files, put it on, a, on Moodle space, students can listen to them beforehand, come for a seminar. It's fascinating. I listen, I listen to all the colleagues, what they've done. <coughs> Finally, and I'll try and show you this as well. In 2010 and 11, I went to New Zealand to work with a colleague, Ian Fuller, about enhancing his fieldwork provision and bringing digital into it. And... Um, we have what's called a video diary reflections bus. You know, like Big Brother? How can you get students to engage with this? I had a camera, a tripod, back of a minibus, five questions. Are you all right then? And I can't, I can't remember if I've got one here. It's the funniest thing you've ever seen. And it's really rich in content. And they talk to camera. I'm not there, I've walked off. And they talk to camera. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 25 minutes, all in the bus. It's rich content. And I call it the Video Diary Reflections Bus, and it ran, it ran fantastic for these students as a talking shop. They came out and went, that's just like therapy. They really enjoyed it. 
Uh, finally, I've got one other thing as well. I didn't put it on. Uh, MSC, we have an MSC of, uh, on, uh, on community and business. And basically, we, our first module is called Unsustainable Challenge. That doesn't really matter, it's actually in Spain. But the key thing is, the master's module runs over three days. How do we get the students to reflect so when they go away to do the assessment, they're on, on message? So we came up with a splice video where they reflect on issues that have come up during that day on sustainability. And they present that end of each day. And it's all done on the fly with an iPad. But it's a quick, easy way to get them to reflect. Because how do you be, how do you be, how do you be informative feedback to a module that's three days long? So we're forced in that reflection. We're on a remote, we're on a <laughs> remote desert field station in southeast Spain. So it's got to be all together in your hand. And they hated it on the Friday. And by Sunday they went, I was really thankful we did that, Derek, because it made them think about what we meant by the terms, what we meant by sustainability, by the examples. So everybody hates to be reflective, don't they? Well, I do. But I get off and get forced into it eh, all the time. And it's a good thing afterwards. But that's after the break. One final thing that should be in here is students doing bits to camera on field work. So what we're going to do next, after the break, is that, but what I want to show you now is some examples. Ooh. So, yeah. Right, context for this. This is in New Zealand. The students have been on a field trip for a week. And part of the assessment is to, to do uh, a summary of geomorphology of the week. We're not, we're not going to watch all of it, we're just going to see a flavour of it. And they produced it with little, little guidance. Eight, a, 8 a.m. in the morning, day one. Right, you get a, you get a feel for what's going on. Um, this is actually the year before. This is actually near the Fox Glacier, and the students had to do a presentation in the week using PowerPoint. And we said, Why are you telling us about the methods you're using at the end of the week in the PowerPoint? Why don't you just do a video of the methods and scene set? And they went, Oh, that's all right. And this is a one on the, on the Fox. So I was enjoying that, I got carried away, I, I listened to it. Key thing about this is, these are distance learning students on a field course for a week. None of them knew each other be prior to that trip. And some of the footage they produced, uh, I actually use it in my teaching. So, uh, Finally, uh, <laughs> some of our first years. I say I like the idea it's an Eastern European student doing it about Eastern European influences. But the final thing is you nail this down, you've got your assessment nailed down, you do the ethics of the production, ethics of the thing, and the students get creativity. <coughs> Hang on, here we go. It's just
This is their assessment they hand in. Now, they would have got a first, but they failed on the ethics bit at the end. That was their Polish night out with the Polish community. But when you give them students creative license, they'll go beyond the remit. So it's best to have a nice tight parameter. We do, we have things, people got to contribute either on camera, off camera, uh, agreed, but then we have peer evaluation where they mark each other. So if, you, if you're carrying any passengers, they are aware of it. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed phase one. Uh, good conversation, uh, I'm a bit warm now. Uh, phase two is all about you, but hopefully you've enjoyed the examples I've given you to make you think about what you can do uh, in your teaching practice. But we'll go into that in a moment. Some big sheets of paper. Um, we'll have a. Yeah, great. Thank you.